All right. So today we're going to see a couple of uh, a kind of problem that is very much like finding the minimum or the maximum uh, as the user enters input, for example. But we're also going to keep track of things associated to those minimum and those maximum. So the case that I'm going to show you today is that we're going to have a race, a 1K race, and people are going to and somebody's going to enter the runner ID and the time in minutes. So they will enter runner IDs and times in minutes. This program will determine which one was the, the fastest time, the minimum, right? The minimum time is the fastest. It'll determine which one is the fastest time and which one was the slowest time. But it will also keep track and tell us who was the slowest runner and who was the fastest runner. So it's going to keep track of the minimum of the values, but also the runner ID associated to those minimum or maximum values. So for that, we're going to first start by declaring our variables. We're going to start by declaring our variables. We're going to use a, uh, this is by the way, a class called best place 1k for that race. I'll import the scanner. And then here's my main method. Here are my variables. I will need a scanner to enter uh, information. I will need to keep track of the minimum time and the minimum ID. So the runner that got the minimum time, this is the fastest. And then I'm going to keep track of the maximum time or the slowest time and also the slowest runner, the maximum ID. And as I enter runner IDs and times, I'm going to keep track of their, I'm going to uh, have a variable to hold the runner's time and the runner ID. Okay, so first I'll ask the question with a couple of system printouts. Well, I'll say to finish enter zero for both the runner ID and the time when asked. Now, Right now, enter the runner ID. I'm going to say enter the runner ID, and the runner ID gets the value of the next integer entered. In the same way, I'm going to ask for the runner's time. So I'll say enter the, the time in minutes, and then runner's time is going to be the next integer. Now what happens here is that <coughs> I want to initialize the maximum, the minimum, uh, the maximum time and the minimum time to something. And I also want to initialize the maximum ID and the minimum ID to something. So initially I'm going to initialize this this runner, this runner that people just enter, the first runner. I'm going to say that the maximum uh, time and the minimum time are the same. They're both this runner's times. The same thing for the ID. So we'll start with the time with the maximum. So the maximum time is going to be this runner's time. The maximum ID is going to be this runner. This runner's IDs. And then for the minimum time it's going to be the same one and the minimum ID is going to be whatever was the maximum. So initially if we have one runner that person was the fastest and the slowest, right? So this is what this, this these lines here are initializing. Okay. Now we need to start asking for more times and um, uh, for more IDs and times until the runner ID or the time is zero, right? So until both the time, the runner ID and the time are zero. So we're going to create a little while loop that says, well, the runner ID is greater than zero. So if somebody puts zero for runner ID, this will exit. And we'll prompt the user to enter the runner ID or zero to exit. And then I store the runner ID here. Or the time in minutes and enter the time in minutes and save it as runner time. Now, I need something to keep track of whether it was the maximum or the minimum, whether this runner uh, got a better time than the, than the minimum, or whether this runner got a worse time than the maximum. I'm going to put, so that, that's an if statement, right? An if statement conditional, testing whether one thing is greater than the other. I'm going to put that above the print lines, and this will be clear once I um, explain this. So I'll put two conditionals here. I'll put two, these, these are printouts, and above those printouts, I put two conditionals. I say, if the runner time is greater than the maximum time, then update the maximum time, but also, and this is the important part, also keep track of the ID of the runner that got the maximum ID. I'm keeping track right here. The same, th same thing for the faster runner. If the runner time is less than the minimum so far, then update that minimum time with the runner's time, but also keep track of the ID that got the minimum and set it to this runner's ID. What happens is initially, initially, this is the runner ID, this is the runner time, the runner ID hopefully will be greater than zero, 
So then we're going to check, is the runner time greater than the max time? That's going to be false, because the max time is already that runner's time. So that runner's time cannot be greater than it actually itself. Okay, so this if is not going to be executed. Then we go to this if. Is the runner time less than the minimum time? But the minimum time is equal to the maximum time. And the maximum time is equal to the runner's time. So, the runner time is equal to the min time. It's not less than at this point. So this if is not going to be executed. So in the first run, these ifs are not going to be executed. Now, after you start after you start entering things, runner IDs and runner times, the while condition is going to check whether the runner ID is greater than zero, and if it is, then these things are going to are going to make sense. So from the second one on, these ifs make sense, but not from the first one on. Okay, and that's that's a, a, a tricky way of not having to do more ifs in case the runner ID is zero or something. But uh, a good practice is to initialize values outside of the while loop, then do the comparisons that you need to do, and then ask for the next round of values. Okay? And then at the end of the program, once we exit this while loop, all right, once we exit that, we're ready to print the last runner was the one with the maximum time, right? And then the best runner is the one with the minimum time. Okay? So we'll compile this and run it, and as we run it, I'm going to increase this area so we can see this. So to finish, enter 0 for both the runner ID and the time when asked. So enter the runner ID. So runner ID 109. The time in minutes, 34 minutes. Enter the runner ID, or 0 to exit again, so runner ID 108. This is going to be our fastest guy. He it took him 12 minutes to finish. And then runner ID 107 is going to be our slowest guy. It, took him uh, 67 minutes to finish. Now 0 to exit and 0 to exit. Remember, our best guy is 108 with 12 and our worst guy is 107 with 67. And time in minutes, 0 to exit, there you go. So last runner, 107 with 67 minutes, that was the last guy, 107 with 67 minutes. And the first one was 108 with 12 minutes. 108 with 12 minutes. Remember, we have kept track of not only these values, which one is the min, which one is the max, but also the values associated to them, and, you, and we did that by basically, in the ifs where you update the max or the min, you also update all the other variables that you need to keep track of. If you were gonna also compute the average for example, running time, well, you would have to have another variable here that accumulates the sum of all the runners' times and then an accounter to count how many runners are there and then print it out, okay?